Hey, good evening, everyone. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Got a lot to talk about tonight. So excited to be with you. Um, a lot happening today. Today was a good day and uh, excited to be with you. When, um, when you hop on, put your name in so I know where you're I don't know if you guys can still hear me. Am I there? Can you still hear me? Let me check. Am I having some technical difficulty? Let me. Can you guys see me, hear me? Sarah, welcome. If you can see me, let me know. Okay, hang me, hang with me, guys, just for a second. I see all of you saying a bit choppy. A lot of people on the internet tonight. Hang with me real quick. My guest is going to join me in just a second. Special guest tonight. Just trying to get on right now. What's up, what's up, guys? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for being here tonight. Got a lot to discuss. Um, sorry, the internet's choppy tonight. Just what it is. Everyone's at home, so the internet's choppy. So let me add my let me add my special guest tonight. What's up, everyone? There he is. Mr. Ryan Lee himself. What is up, Chaz? My man, thanks for joining me tonight. Man, it's such an honor to be on with you tonight. So just for, so if you guys don't know, this is Ryan Lee. Ryan uh, is a founder of an, uh, a company called Cashflow Tactics. I really want to say an organization because you're more like an organization. Yeah. Uh, a, a community. I think that's really what it is. I mean, we're trying to build a movement. Um, I don't know if that's an over cliche yeah. word, but yeah. we're trying to build a movement of people that are rising up and taking action inside of their financial plan. Yeah, I love it. So Ryan is the leader of that movement. And uh, man, we're getting, look at this. This is awesome. We have so many people on right now. Look at this. Yay, Ryan. Excited to hear your thoughts. What's up, Sarah? Sarah, a lot of these people. That So I wore this just for you, I don't know if you can see this. This is a cash flow mastery shirt. Dude, I should have worn my shirt, man. Dang it. That's all right. That's all right. I didn't send you the memo. I didn't send you the memo. So listen, Ryan not only is the leader of this movement, the cash flow tactics, uh good just a good dude and a friend of mine. We we were at an event about a month ago together, and I shared this with some people recently. About five thousand people were there, uh, is the number I heard. It was a lot of people. Um, and in that whole crowd, there was about 10 of us or so that I could tell that had our, had one of our kids at the event. Uh, I brought my 12 year old and you brought your 12 year old. Yeah. And so Ryan and I were one of the only people that had our kids there. And I just thought it was pretty cool that he invested in his kids to be part of that. So, um, I don't know if I shared that with you before, but that meant a lot to see you were there with your, your daughter. Same thing. And I honestly, I wasn't surprised with you there with your son. I mean, you're that type of father, right? And I think, you know, as parents, we have we have a, a really a unique opportunity to empower our kids with with mindsets early on. I mean, think how malleable your mind is at that. Yeah. And when you help people, when you help those young kids see a vision of what's possible, like that has a trajectory, that has a, the potential to change the entire trajectory of their life. So true. So true. So Listen, I want to I want to ask you a question. There's so much going on. And every night I've had different people. Last night I had our friend Satema Nali on. Uh, Satema was on last night talking about mindset and some of the things that that come with that and how 
how look, we both said we've been through something like this before. Nobody's been through this, right? Nobody's been through this exactly. But, you know, I was in business during 9-11. I was in business in 2007, 2008. And, and so for me, it's like I've been through some tough times in business. I know how to be resourceful to some extent. But there's some people right now that are new in business. They've never been through something like this. We said last night, you know, lean on us a little bit if you've not been on that. But, you know, what say you in this kind of situation for somebody that's in business right now that, you know, they're not used to something like this. They're not sure what to do. Yeah. You know what? Um, here's here's the way I would look at it. Um, you know, I really feel like life happens in one of two ways and it's all dependent on your perspective. Right. Your perspective will determine the reality that you live in. And life is either happening for you. Right. It's giving you the exact circumstances, opportunities and situations that you need to learn the lessons that life is meant to teach you so you can become the person that you're meant to become. And that a business is just a manifestation of you. Right. And so life might be happening for you right now. It's happening for all of us. If we have the right perspective, that it's giving us the opportunity to understand the environment that we're living in today how right up to the red line most people are living it's giving us the opportunity to learn some very unique life lessons business yes. lessons personal finance lessons mm. so if, if life is happening for you then you get to learn those lessons and learning those lessons will make you stronger more capable and more prepared to face whatever life is going to give us right Yes. On the flip side of that, if you have a different perspective, life isn't happening for you. Life is happening to you. And you're constantly reactionary. You're constantly running, you know, like a chicken with your head cut off because you run from one disaster, one situation to another because you never learn the lessons that life continually tees up for you. And I think that's really the opportunity that anyone has right now, whether you're in business or, you know, or not, you have the opportunity to take this for what it is because we can't control what's happening. We can just control our reaction to it. Yes. You can learn the lessons that will make you more capable, more strong, and more prepared to rise up as a leader, to rise up as a business owner, right? This this will give you unique opportunities to be a strong business that looks for an, a way to create value in this unique opportunity. It's interesting, too, if you think about that rise up, even in the matter of changing your perspective, you know? If I'm sitting here looking at my situation like this, but when I rise up, I get to see it in a different light. I get to see the different perspective. I can see things as they are. And I used to joke, I, I coached high school football for a number of years. And I, I remember one of the first games I was on the sideline and I'm coaching. I was calling the offense. I was offensive coordinator. I'm calling the offense. And then the head coach says, next game, I, I'd like you to go up in the box and sit up there. I was like, I don't want to be up there. And all of a sudden I get up there pregame. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I can see things totally different up here than I could on the sideline. And it changed that whole perspective when I was calling the game. And I think that's what it's like in business. It's like, you got to move yourself. You got to move to a different location, rise up and see what's going on around you. I love that analogy. Very, very powerful. So in this, you know, you talk about, and, and, and I've shared, I've, I've quoted you, I don't know, 30 times in the last two days about talking about mindset, skill set, and networks. Um, let's kind of go through all three of those because I think they're powerful and, and I'd like to share some examples with each of those as well. But what do you think right now? And, I, and I've had several people on, I, I'm doing twice a day right now. I'm doing in the morning, I'm doing at night. And by the way, I feel like I got to turn my head around backwards too, just to, <laughs> you know, okay. so, <laughs> so, so here we go. Like, what's the mindset right now? Like what, What's the mindset I should be approaching? I mean, there's a lot of unknowns still. We, my kids just got another email that their school's now extended even further. Um, I, we just stopped to buy a local restaurant tonight because I wanted to order some food and support a local business. And I talked to the owner there. He actually owns the whole franchise, happened to be there. And we got to talking. He says, I got 40 locations or whatever it is. I don't know if we're going to survive this. Yeah. Like, what's the mindset people should be taking right now in business? Man, I tell you what, the, the predominant mindset is that of fear. Right. Yeah. And fear is kind of like a virus and fear will breed upon itself. And before you know it, it will take over. Right. And I think the natural tendency for people is to react with fear. I mean, that's the easy reaction to default to is to react to fear. But we have an opportunity. We always have this opportunity to yes. react with faith. And, you know, faith is a really unique way to react. Right. I, I don't know the outcome. I mean, today, I don't know if you know this in Utah, but man, today we had yes. a 5.7, 5.8 earthquake. 
I do know because my brother and sister live there and I got a text at like whatever it was, eight, eight thirty this morning, yeah. right after it happened. So man, I can't imagine you guys going through all this and you wake up to a five point whatever earthquake this morning. Yeah, and, and honestly, man, I mean that's that's the it is kind of crazy right now. I mean, with the coronavirus and you know, an earthquake today, you know, my wife and I kind of looked at each other and we said, Well, what's next? you know? Yeah. And here's what I know. Um, you know, if if we if we live in the future, right? We don't control anything that's going to happen. And that's going to cause you to have a sense of anxiety and a sense of fear. Yeah. But what I do know is we live in the present moment. The only time that we have any power is when we look at what's right in front of us right now and yeah. deal with the present moment. And I think the mindset that we have to cultivate, we have to adopt, we have to exercise is to choose faith in the present moment, learn the lessons that life is giving us and fix one problem at a time, become the person capable of you know, if you're a business owner and you're struggling right now, man, I feel for you. I totally get that. I'm a business owner. And we're asking ourselves the same questions. Can we support our team? How do we do this? But inside of our business, you know, one of the things that we believe in strongly is building a very, very strong foundation. You know, we like to keep six months of reserves of operating expenses in reserve, which means, yes, we're in uncertain times. Yes, our revenue is going to be impacted over the next couple of months. I don't know how long, but we've built a foundation to stand on. So cultivating a mindset of, look, let's deal with things in the present moment. Let's, let's act in faith rather than fear. Because if you act in fear, you're reactionary and you're the decisions that you make are not going to be the best decisions. You're just it's kind yeah. of light mode. Yeah. If you act in faith. You can go back to what you talked about and act with a little bit more perspective and, and, you know, make decisions that will be long run better decisions. Yeah. And I talk, I've talked the last couple of nights about making sure you, you, you know, the military, they, they prepare, physically, mentally, you know, all of that stuff. And then they have a plan. And then when that plan doesn't go, they pivot. And what you, what you said is you got six months reserve that mindset of in the present. Well, that's because you have to be when, when, you know, things start flying at you, you got to be in the moment of the present and fall back to your reserves, fall back to your training, fall back to those things that you've been working on. And, and this is a good time to really look at our mindset like a muscle and really start to flex it and, and draw on it. Yeah. And for a lot of us, gosh, I mean, I don't know how often we exercise that muscle, right? When things are going really well, we just right. kind of reap the benefits of things going really well. And for the last decade, I mean, things have gone pretty well. The economy has been in constant growth mode. And yeah, there's been hiccups here and there. But for most businesses, for most people, you know, it's been an upward trajectory. And like yeah. any economy, like any business cycle, there's going to be a cycle, whether it's an, uh, a health related cycle, a market crash, a war, whatever it is. Like this, nothing goes in a straight line forever. That's not what we're meant to do. It's not meant to just be peaches and cream. Life is meant to give us challenges so we can react, so we can become, so we can flex that mindset muscle. And the more habitual we make that, the more prepared we are for when those moments come. So what do you think right now are, are you know, I think that mindset as well, I, I, one of the things I've been talking about is, and it's been interesting is I think this situation is revealing leadership too, a mindset of leadership. Like we've got some people who are just absent and silent yeah, because they don't, they don't want to be wrong right now because they're afraid to be shamed. And so in, in, in the fear of being wrong or the fear of making the wrong choice or the fear of saying the wrong thing, they just, they don't say anything and they, they're not leading at all. And I think right now the question to ask is all of us are leaders of something, right? You, you've got a family, you've got a business, you've got a community, whatever it is what kind of steward am I being over those that I've been sort of called the lead in any way? Uh, you've got a community. I've got a community. Many people who are watching right now have a community. And I think the question to ask is what kind of steward am I to the people I've been asked to lead? Yeah. Uh, and then what kind of skill sets should I develop right now that can help these people? Totally love that. You know, man, we, we recorded a video yesterday. I think in, in moments, uh, it's easy to lead in moments of, of simplicity and everything's working right. True leaders shine in moments of chaos. True leaders shine when, when things get dark, when things get difficult, a leader rises. And I think people will appreciate you stepping up and leading. You might say the wrong things. You might have to pivot and change directions. You yeah. might stumble. You might accidentally be vulnerable and say, you don't have all of the answers. And as, as, right. as you know, a leader doesn't need to have all of the answers. A leader just right. needs to have courage to rise up and lead people towards faith, lead people towards abundance, lead people, lead people towards a positive outcome and let them stay well in fear. Yeah, I uh, 
so agree with that. Like we people are just looking for this positive message right now instead of consuming all the chaos yeah. there. And so I, I think uh, I remember um, being at a training and Pat Combs who used to be a uh, major league baseball pitcher. Uh, he was teaching and he said this. I remember I pulled this quote this morning. He said, this is really powerful and it's so true right now. Uh, in fact, let me just share this. Sarah just said, I started today with an overwhelmed mindset, getting into productivity and reaching out to my network made all the difference. Oh, it's so powerful, Sarah. Yeah. Um, and then <clears throat> Barb says, yes, indeed on that. Let's all rise up. Barb from Louisiana. And then uh, Bobby Jones, we're having the best March we've ever had and are constantly innovating and adjusting to the present. Oh. So Pat Combs said this. He said, guys, listen to this quote. Listen to this. No group. Family, city, state, or nation can rise above the constraint of its leaders, meaning your leaders is like the law of the lid. Your leaders put the lid, and you can't rise above the constraint of your leaders. So here's the thing, though, that I take that personally. If I'm the leader of whatever it is, whether it be group, family, city, state, nation, we they can't rise above my constraints. And so what kind of a leader am I being right now in this in this time so powerful it is and i think authentic leadership is what people are craving right now authentic yeah. leadership is what people are always craving but when times are easy you know people people just don't really ask themselves difficult and serious questions when time when everything's going smooth yeah so, so true kind of hits the fan right when things kind of turn upside down people take a step back they evaluate they look at things and they either if there's someone to lead them they follow that person but they're looking in moments of chaos, that's when that's when a sound voice, like a light in the in the middle of a dark room, will shine and pull the people that are looking for that light forward. So let's transition just a little bit to skill set. And, and I know you guys have a new podcast that you just released. I think this week, right, or last week? Uh, yeah, it's two weeks. Two weeks now. We're in two weeks. So how do people? First of all, how do people find this podcast? I want to make sure because you guys, first of all, you guys, to me, and this is this is where my mindset comes in. I said to Satema last night, I listen to him in the morning. I've listened to you. I watch your Facebook. I watch others that I admire. I trust friends of mine. So I plug in in the morning too. So guys, Ryan's podcast, the things they're teaching, their Facebook group, you guys need to plug in. How can they How can they find it? I'll put it up here on the... I appreciate that. It's uh, cashflowtactics.com forward slash podcast. You know, I think that's the URL that will take you right there. Or you can just go to app you know, wherever you download your podcast from and just listen or down or search rise up, live free podcast. Cashflowtactics.com slash podcast. Yeah. Appreciate Guys, that. You, you need to plug in and listen to this. I, I know it's easy to plug somebody's podcast. It's easy to sell somebody's book or plug it. I'm telling you, I'm only bringing guys. I'm bringing people like Ryan who I plug into people I connect with. And I feel what's, what's been so powerful is, you know, working on my own skill sets by listening to people like you and others that I've brought into my world has really helped me get my mindset and then work on my skill sets. So what, what are some of the things I should be working on? Somebody listening right now, what are some of the things I should be working on right now in this time? And some are calling it downtime. I'm not so sure I agree with that. I've worked more in the last five days. I shouldn't say worked more, but I mean, I have been, I don't know, man, I'm running at a speed that I have not run in a long time. Totally agree. You know, I think one of the greatest opportunities that we have right now as leaders is to look for the opportunity, right? Fortunes are made. And when I talk about fortunes, I truly believe dollars follow value. So the only way a fortune is made is if you're able to create massive value. There is a massive pivot happening right now in the entire economy. I mean, like yeah. everything is shifting upside down. I went out tonight after after work. And the roads were empty. The stores were closed. The traffic was gone. I mean, everyone is at home right now, right? And everyone is hunkered down. They're scared. They're nervous. They don't know what to do. And right now is a, an amazing opportunity to look for problems and become the solution, right? And that might require a whole different skill set, or it might just be changing your message a little bit to pierce the market, pierce the fear in the current environment that we're in right now. So for us in our business, we're, I mean, we talk about financial freedom in 10 years or less. That is a very positive driven outcome. But guess what? Right now, people aren't really worried about financial freedom. People are worried about the scarcity in the present moment. And so yeah. what we're talking about, we're shifting our message into two things, talking about the, the, the benefit of having a solid financial foundation, right? In fact, um, 
you know, and this isn't a change of our message. Just, this is just highlighting a different piece of it. You know, we held an event back here in, in Utah in October. And guess what we talked about as the foundation of your financial plan, having a food storage. Yeah. <laughs> Not about having a hedge against chaos because we don't know when chaos comes, but having a hedge against that chaos is we talked about gold and silver, having a food storage. And everyone back there was like, ah, food storage. I want well, to I was going to ask you, how many people took your advice? No, I mean, it's crazy. Inside of one of our, our mastermind groups, we have people saying, man, I wish I would have bought the food storage. Jimmy, you know, one of our partners yeah, yeah. Had, hadn't bought his food storage yet. And he's realizing how important it is. But guess what? You know, that if you reach financial freedom and you don't have a foundation to stand on, you've lost everything that you care about along the way. It doesn't matter. So building a foundation that stands the test of time, we're just pivoting our message now saying, look, you need to have a fine, solid financial foundation. The next thing that we're doing is one of the biggest things that hold people up inside of their financial plan, in my opinion, is they don't know how to create income that is detached from their time. They don't know how to create income wow. online. So we're actually launching in two weeks an entire program around a side hustle challenge. Right, and we're teaching people how to make money online, how to create a message, how to leverage a skill set that you have and do it online. And what better time than right now when everyone's sitting at home online? So as you talk about the skill sets, man, I think it's looking out in the marketplace. And a true leader, someone who truly understands how to create value, can see what the problems are, and then they can, they can create or become the solution. And I think that's the opportunity that we have as leaders. That's the opportunity that we have when I talk about making a fortune to truly create massive value and dollars follow value. It's not like money isn't going to be flowing. Money is just going to be flowing in the direction that is solving people's problems that they're facing right now. Chaz, did I lose you, buddy? Hello, hello. I don't know what happened, man. I don't know. Ashley said you did more than pivot. You moonwalked. I, I, I'm not sure what happened there. How, how long did I, like I was going, how long did I go before we froze up? I have no idea, man. And I don't know if it's mine. It's probably mine. Like I know yesterday or this morning, our area, like the uh, internet was down. Like, could you imagine all these kids at home trying to do e-learning and they can't connect with to the yeah. internet? Yeah. So let me just say something to what you were talking about. I just, I think it's amazing. And hopefully the internet stays while we can here. There's so many great people on right now. Guys, if you have a question, if you, if you have a question, please. Oh, Gary says Ryan never froze. So it must've been my end. Um, so guys, if you have a question for Ryan, make sure you type it in or for myself and we'll make sure we, we, we ask these. So I think the thing to, to keep in mind, and, and you're talking about food storage, you know, the old, if you're prepared, you shall not fear kind of thing. So there's two camps, you know, there's people who are prepared and I feel like I'm a little more prepared, but yet I still feel exposed on a few things. You know, like I've got more money set aside than I did in 2009 when this happened. Uh, my wife and I, I think a year and a half, two years ago, something like that, we went out and got food, a bunch of food stores for Christmas. So we had, that was our Christmas present to each other. We thought it was lame at the time, but now we're like, huh, months of food storage, like we have crates or, or the uh, containers, just containers of the kind of dried food stuff. But you know what? Like that stuff gave us a sense of peace. Man, isn't that what it is? Because here's the reality. Um, you know, as, as you look at the chaos in the world, and that's that's what having a foundation is. Like having a food storage is an investment in your peace of mind. It's a return on your attention. It's not a return on your dollar spent or return on your investment. But when you build a solid foundation – something that gives you peace of mind, then you can approach the world of investing, right? Financial freedom with um, an abundance mindset because you've built the foundation. You know, this morning, I, I shared something on, on Instagram this morning. It was almost one year ago today, we had an earthquake in Utah. So in Utah, we're not very accustomed to earthquakes, but it was almost one year ago today, I woke up and mm. I was started awake by an earthquake and it scared me, right? And I realized I don't have earthquake insurance on my primary residence and I own eight rental properties in Utah. I don't have earthquake insurance. So I was in a state of panic, right? Of what's, you know, what would have happened? What did happen? And immediately, as soon as that happened, I called my, my insurance guy and they put a moratorium. You couldn't buy earthquake insurance for 45 days. 
after the earthquake, earthquake and every day I was calling them up, calling them up, hey, I want earthquake insurance. And I finally got it. I insured my home and all of the homes that I have here in Utah. And guess what? This morning when the earthquake went off, yes, I was scared. But the first thing I did is I ran up and I checked on my kids, made sure everyone was okay. And then I walked out and I checked my property. And then I called my property manager and he checked all the other properties that we have. But I wasn't nervous about the loss. I had mitigated that fear. I had mitigated that loss with insurance. I had mitigated that because of the foundation that I built. And the same with food storage. You know, if someone came to me right now and said, hey, I want to buy your food storage, I'll pay you two times the value. It's priceless. It's not an yeah. This is a return on my attention to make sure I've built a foundation. Such a great point. Such a great point, man. I'm so glad you made that point. I mean, we, we were talking about that too. Not only did not only did did we have the food storage, but it just so happened that my wife happened to be out shopping when they started to close our school and we were getting those notices and stuff. They extended our spring break. And I remember she texted me and she's like, we, we do kind of a profit first thing. We talked about this at Cashflow Mastery. I have all these different accounts. And she said, how much is in our, you know, our, our grocery kind of spending account? And I, I told her the amount and she's like, okay, can you move more money there? Cause I'm about to, <laughs> I'm about to just add to our food store since I'm out. Cause I'm afraid everyone's going to get nutty and it happened. And so like we, we were set there. And so I love, I love that. Let me, let me share a question. Uh, got several questions coming in. What do you guys think? people should be focusing on as business leaders and in our personal lives. Yeah. I think we kind of touched on some of that, but what else do you, do you think well, you want to add to that? Victoria, was that who asked that question? That was Victoria. Yeah, Victoria, that's a great question. Um, I truly believe that a business is a reflection of you, the business owner, right? The business will only advance and rise as fast as you, the individual rise. So before you think about your business, think about yourself, right? And talking about this idea of investing in your mindset, your skill set, and your network, if you approach, if you step into your business and you have a scarcity mindset right now, you're you're you know you're riddled with fear. That's going to manifest inside of your business and manifest in the profitability and the success of that business. So yeah, so good. Think about this: you invest in your mindset, right? And this doesn't happen overnight. It, it's not an easy thing to do. But one of the things I do every single morning, and and this is crazy. I mean, you know, if you think about the two most or the most powerful two words in the English language. It's I am, and then whatever you put after that. Wow. Yeah. I am, capable, I am good. I am, I, I can invest. I am strong. I am a leader or I am not worthy. I am not able to do it. I, you know, whatever you put behind that. And so every morning I watch a video that I created for myself and I'll just throw it up here really quick so you can see it maybe. And it's an, I am video. And I tell myself every single morning who I am. Oh, man. And I watch this every morning and every night because I want to reinforce my mindset. Did you create that for you? For, I've been doing this for the last decade. I created this for me. I have my own statements of who I'm like. So here's the crazy part. I'll, I'll fast forward into this movie here really quick so you can see it. But I mean, this isn't a video you found. This is a video you created. On me. Look, at you'll see a picture of me right here. Man. Do you see that right there? I It's coming right here. Yep. Oh, maybe I already went. So it says, no, I, saw it. I, saw it. I am a dynamic podcaster. Guess what, man? I've been afraid to launch a podcast for two years and I've had to build my mindset to where now when I do my podcast, I get to be on there and I'm confident in my ability. And I didn't Gosh. have nights. I've been telling myself with an image and with the statement that I am a dynamic, dynamic podcaster. I am a content creator. I deliver value. Victoria, there's your answer. I said last night in my book, Now Make Good, my second book, which by the way, you guys, what we did to get creative is we offered all of our books in our store for $5. So you don't have like just it's wholesale. Go get them for five bucks. You got time to read right now. Go get it. So, but what I said is the only thing that's in all of my books and is in the third book as well is self-talk. And you're, you're like, you're creating that self-talk for yourself. That's a great thing to be working on personally. Um, the other thing I would do is like, and this is what I want to ask you. You said you're creating this course for side hustles. Did you guys just decide to create this or have you already been working on it? No, nah, we just decided to create it. I mean, in, in light of everything that's going on, we totally pivoted our message, right? And we're leading inside of our audiences right now, just delivering positive messages every single day to reinforce people's mindset and their confidence in their ability. And that this is their opportunity to rise up. Like when we talk to people about becoming free, you don't just wake up free. You become free and it starts with yes. in your mindset. So the, the side hustle course is just a pivot for us because 
That's the demand. That's the need. That's the opportunity. And so we're pivoting what we're doing to fulfill on that need and opportunity. So the reason why I asked you this is I, and this is going to tie into skill set and network. I'm going to tie this together. So today I did a podcast with somebody who I ended up sending over to you today. Uh, guys sold more books on planet earth, I think than anyone else, half a billion books, dude, half a billion books. So when I was talking to him, he said two things. He said, one is we need to get into the power of ask, you know, ask for something, ask and you shall receive. And then the second thing he said is, and, and if you believe that one is you ask yourself questions. And then he said, another is you ask God for things. He then said to me, then you, and we started talking about this. He said, when you get, you talk about God as a creator, when you get into creation, your, your God-like power comes into you. And so what I, the reason why I asked you that is because you guys got into creation. And so if you want to have this faith you're talking about, and this isn't, I'm not turning this into a necessary religious discussion. I'm just saying, if you want to get into this movement, momentum. Chaz, we might have lost again, my man. Texas. Get into the yeah. Can you hear me? There you go now. Can you hear me? Got you. Yeah. I'm going to step away and I'm going to grab a book when you come back on. This is for Victoria. Just keep on. All right. So, um, Victoria, if you're looking for some, some reading and you're talking about this godlike power of creation, it's a book that I read that is amazing. Recently, Mark Batterson Chase the Lion. So it talks about facing your fear. And if you think about fear, fear can really have two meanings. You can fear everything and run, or you can rise, right? And that's what we have the opportunity to face our lions, to face the things that are in front of us right now. Life is happening for us. Life is giving us the exact opportunities that the entire world needs. Right? If you look at this, the entire world, wake up call. They need a wake up call to what's important to slow down, to reconnect. I mean, everyone right now is realizing how, how important it is to be connected with their family, how to interact with their children, how to run a, 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 a life when your income might be a little bit volatile and it's giving us the unique opportunity to learn some lessons. So chase the lion. I love that book. That'll help you learn how to start accessing godlike power to find a message that's unique to you and create value by bringing that message, bringing that solution that only you can provide to the marketplace. I love that, man. So the, hopefully I don't drop again. If I do, they're not losing you. You keep talking. <laughs> so, so, so there was another question here. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, Sarah had, Ryan had, so, or, yeah, hang on. So how do I help my members be okay with asking for business themselves and asking people to join their master networks chapter? I think some people are struggling, struggling right now, asking for business. Man, I think right now is the most important time to ask for business because here, here's what I think, Sarah, um, you know, the health implications of what's going on right now, I believe they're going to be relatively small, right? I mean, there's going to be some mortality for sure, but the biggest implement implications of what's going on right now, our people are now walled off. People are scared. People are in their home. They're by themselves. They're afraid. And the only way to pull out of that, in my opinion, is to be associated with like-minded, purpose-driven, abundance-based individuals. I remember, and I'm going to give you a network from my life. When I, when I first started doing what we talk about in, in cash flow tactics with my financial plan, I did the exact opposite of what everyone around me in my social circle was doing. And with every step I took, everyone said I was crazy. And Sarah, by myself, I felt crazy. And by myself, for every step forward that I took, I took two steps back because I was constantly second guessing myself. I was uncertain. I, was, I wasn't around anyone that could fortify and build me up. But I'll never forget when I finally got connected with like-minded individuals, people that were doing the things that I wanted to do, I developed a sense of confidence. And no longer was that confidence coming from podcasts or from books, because those are the things I was consuming by myself. The confidence came from the results of other people. When I got with a group, I realized, man, if they can do that, I can do it as well. And now more than ever, I think abundance and being in like-minded groups right now, that is the best investment you can make to protect your mindset. 
investing in a network right now, asking for money so people are committed and bringing people into an organization that fortifies and builds their mindset and their skill sets and associates them with a network, that is how you help people rise. And we don't rise alone. We rise. Yep. Yep. Gary LaRue says, if you've ever been really hungry, you won't be afraid to ask. Wow. Yeah. yeah, so true. <clears throat> so let me, let me, and again, internet here, let me, let me make an announcement to those listening. So we are continuing to do connect that will be in August. And I had uh, a speaker that I hadn't announced who I sent to you today. You no. Know, so nobody knew the, the person I sent to you today, no one knew was going to be speaking at connect. So if you guys have heard and that, and I can't, it's out of the bag today. And the reason is because I did a podcast with him today and he's like, I can't wait to see you at connect on the podcast. I'm like, no. So I can't edit that out the whole thing, you know? So, um, you know, ugh. so who do you guys think it is? You guys want to know who it is? It's coming to connect that, that uh, I sent over to Ryan today. Um, this, this person, like I said, has sold half a billion books. I'm going to tie this into what you just said is why. That's a big number. That is crazy. Dude, it's so big. Half a billion books. And you guys would all recognize many of the books, but probably the most recognizable book is uh, Chicken Soup for the Soul. And so Mark Victor Hansen, Mark Victor Hansen is the author of Chicken Soup for the Soul series. He is speaking at Connect. That's awesome. That is so yeah, cool. Dude. So cool. So I Mark Victor Hansen. I can't wait to hear from Mark. Yeah, he's amazing. So the reason why I bring that up and, and uh, I just interviewed him today, by the way, this is the power of asking and the power of a network. So I want to share with everyone on, on here how this happened. The reason it happened is he's selling a book and it's called ask. So to Sarah's question, and he said, the successful people learn how to ask and they break down seven roadblocks to why people don't ask. Okay. So, Here's the thing. He, I got connected to him through someone in my network and he wanted to be on a podcast. Guys, I hope you hear the message in this. He wanted to be on a podcast so he could promote his book. Okay. Uh, this, is, this is what happens. I got on a phone call with him. I, I was like starstruck a little bit because I've read many of his books. Super cool dude. Very down to earth. I don't know if you talked to him yet, but very down to earth. He then says, hey, uh, you know, can you have the podcast? I said, let me, let me ask you a question, Mark. And I didn't know what the book was. I didn't know it was ask. I said, I'll tell you what, if I buy 300 copies of your book, would you come speak at my event? And he's like, yeah, when is it? He checked his calendar. He's like, I'm in. It was that simple. So not only is he going to come speak at our event now that it got moved to August, all of my attendees get a copy of his book. That's so awesome. that I, I bought, all, I bought everyone a copy, but then then he says, do you know anyone else that I could get on their podcast to promote my book? And I said, well, yes, I do. And that's why I sent them over to you. So, you know, guys, this is why you invest in your network. And this is why you ask. This is why you connect with people. So you connect with amazing people like Ryan and, and like, you know, Mark Victor Hansen. Heck yeah, pretty, that's awesome. It's pretty cool, right? That's pretty cool, man. I love that story. Okay. So it gets better. I'm going to add one too. This is you. This is for you, my friend. Because you're 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 about to have this powerful podcast you just launched. I had a goal that first my first goal was I wanted a multimillionaire on my podcast. Okay. And then I said, why not a billionaire? Okay. Dude, I kid you not. Right after I sent him to you, he called me and said, Hey, do you know so and so? I'm like, I've heard that name before. How do I know that name? He said he founded this company, this company, this company, this company. I'm like, oh my gosh, yeah. He goes, yeah, he's a billionaire. I just called him and said, you're an amazing guy and he's trying to help entrepreneurs and he'd like to be on your podcast. I'm like, dude, you cannot make this up. Mark, uh, that is so amazing, Chaz. I love that. Holy isn't cow. That cool? But isn't that amazing, the ripple effect? And, and it takes the faith to do something, take a step into the darkness, take a step into the unknown, but you never know what that ripple effect is going to bring to you. And that's, man, I love that. Yeah, it's so cool. And I think the other thing is, is you start to come from contribution. You are willing to hop on my podcast or this Facebook Live tonight. I, I then sent him back to you. Like, this is the power of a network. There's no strings attached, right? Ryan didn't say, hey, I'll be on your Facebook Live if 
you promote my podcast. I'm just promoting your podcast because it's good stuff, right? I didn't have any strings attached. I just sent you. I'm like, hey, man, uh, Mark Victor Hansen wants to be on your podcast. Do you want to have him on? Like, that's the kind of stuff, guys, that that's what networking really is and building into your people, that relational capital. It's not all strings attached in this con game you're doing with people. Like, just be authentic and help people where they are and what they need. Um, Sarah said this. Sarah's worked with me for about eight years, and she said this. This has happened for you so many times because you have the courage to ask. It's true. Like I just ask and things happen like that. And it's been, it's been incredible uh, for that. So let me, let me ask you one last question. I'll let you get back to your family, man. I appreciate you taking the time tonight. It's a pleasure talking to you, Chaz. Um, and guys, this is the thing. Like for me, I'm doing these Facebook lives probably as much for me as for everyone that's watching. Like I'm trying to plug into the people I admire the people I've tried to insulate, not isolate. Like if I, I'm trying to insulate and it's surrounding myself with people like you and so many others that are just powerhouses, but yet we all need to pour in and we need, we need to plug into people. So here's the question I have for you right now. What could our tribe, the people watching, what could they do to help you? What's the ask you would have for us? Whew. That's a really good question. I like that. Um, what? Could Let's not talk about it anymore. Let's do it. No, I love that. Um, you know, honestly, here, here's the thing. Um, and this might be kind of pie in the sky. Kind of not. Okay, so here's the reality, man. Um, when I'm we, putting you on the spot. I get it. No, no, I love this. When we created Cash Flow Tactics, I'm going to give you just a little bit of uh, back yeah. behind this, okay? So I selfishly kind of tell people I created Cash Flow Tactics for me. I was stuck. I didn't know what to do. I did everything wrong. I couldn't fit. I couldn't watch myself go down the path that I was on. And, you know, in the beginning, I'm, I'm just stupid enough to take action after I get a little bit of information. And I tried so many different things that weren't working. And then I found a few things that did. And that inevitably had a ripple effect that led me to my two business partners. And it allowed us to create what we have today. But really, we started for us. We wanted to be financially free. And I'll never forget when we finally launched this company, we started sharing our message with other people and our, our company was primarily referral based business. And, and that's good, but we didn't have a way to predict how profitable or successful our business was going to be because in a referral based business, sometimes it was up, sometimes it was down. So about four years ago, we had enough results. We had enough to know that what we were doing resonated with people and we decided and got committed to marketing it. Now we are not marketers. That is not our natural skill set, And so we read a book, Dot Com Secrets, that helped us understand how to market. We went to um, Russell Brunson's live event. You know, this is five years ago now, and we made a leap of faith and we joined his inner circle. And I'll never forget when we showed up to the very first inner circle meeting. Um, you know, we stood in a room of you know fifty entrepreneurs, give or take. You know, successful marketers, and I remember telling them what we did, and we barely had any idea of how to explain it. But we told them what we did and every single person in that room said, you should do something else. That's mm -hmm. too hard. You can't market to that. You can't say what you're saying and no one's going to believe you. And you can't, you can't kick against this machine of Wall Street. You, you should just do something else because we had other opportunities that could have been a lot easier to mark and a, a market and a lot easier to drive revenue from. But we went back to, um, to our hotel room that night and Brad and I had a very deliberate conversation. And it was really interesting. We were committed to empowering people with money, regardless of what it took. We were committed to that. And we didn't care if we were less profitable. We didn't care, you know, what the, what the path was going to be, but we dedicated ourselves at that moment. And the last three years have been super difficult trying to figure out how to do it, but we finally got the message right. And when we launched cash flow tactics, it's been launched with amazing success. And the reason I'm telling you all of this, we have stayed committed to financial freedom for one reason only. I believe, Chaz, that most people in this world today are not living purpose-driven lives. Yes. They're trading their most valuable resource, their time, in a job or a career or a business that it does not serve them. It's not empowering to them. They're there trading time for money, hoping that one day they have enough money to buy their time back. And all the while, because they're not using their unique talents and gifts, they're miserable, they're suffering, they're not feeling fulfilled, 
And then they look outside of themselves to politicians, to governments, to stock markets, to all these things, and hope that those things will then bring in the solutions to the problems that are in the world. I believe, Chaz, inside of you, you have unique skills and talents. Those are unique to you. Your unique skills and talents solve problems that are in the world that no one else can solve but you. Right. I have unique skills and talents that I can solve that no one else can solve but me. And if the majority of the people would wake up, would rise up, would live a purpose-driven life, two things would happen. The problems that are just compounding, it doesn't matter who sits in the Oval Office, no politician will solve our problems, ever. I believe that. The problems that are compounding would be solved overnight because the solutions to all of these problems inside of the world are inside of people right now that aren't living their life on purpose. So the problems would be solved. And then more importantly than that, man, people that feel stuck, people that feel empty, people that feel just this overwhelming sense of, is this all that life has to offer? They would find a sense of fulfillment because when you're living your unique talents and gifts, it brings you happiness. You solve a problem for someone else, which is ultimately fulfilling. And in many business case scenarios, you make more money because dollars follow value. I mean, it would just revolutionize the world. It would turn it on its head. And that's what I believe that cash flow tactics is really all about is empowering people to yes, become financially free, but not retire to be purpose driven, to live your life on purpose. So your community, man, guys plug into these weekly meetings, these daily meetings, plug into Chaz, plug into what he's talking about, that, invest in your mindsets, your skill sets in your network and take that abundance based mindset to your community, to the people you serve and help them do the same. That's the ripple effect. That's what we want to create is people living their life on purpose. Man, let me just let me just say this. First of all, that's awesome. I appreciate that. Guys, I think you can see really quickly why the first time you and I met, like you can see why uh, I, I gel with this guy, man. Like he just is so authentically living his purpose driven life. And when I meet people like that, it, I don't know why I, it's because I'm doing the same. I think we become fast friends when I meet people like that. We're just authentic and doing there's no strings at, attached. There's no long con on it. It's just like, let's, how do we do this? And uh, again, Victoria says, how can we help Ryan Lee? Uh, Gary said, and I said this at a workshop last week, no one's coming to save you. I, I kind of yelled it at a group. I'm like, no one's coming to save you. Um, Rennell, yeah, I was with Rennell in, in Lubbock, Texas. She says, wow. Um, let me just say this, guys. If you are looking to, to rise up, to live free, as it says behind this is the guy you need to follow. You need to connect with him. You need to follow his stuff. Cash flow tactics. I'll put the banner back up for his podcast. Uh, it is right here. Cashflowtactics.com forward slash podcast. Just a side note, Ryan. Um, I'm writing a book called Impact, Becoming a Person of Positive Influence. One of our principles is purposeful. I would love to interview you about purposeful and have you in the book and tell your story about purpose-driven life. I'd be an honor, Chaz. I mean, I want to follow you anywhere you go, my man. I appreciate that, man. I appreciate your time tonight, guys. Listen, every day I'm coming to you twice a day, morning and night, uh, to just share messages right now. Be be producers of positivity, not consumers of chaos right now. Uh, just say that one more time. I know this has been viral. This is you want to talk about virus? I said this the other night, and it is just be a producer of positivity, not a consumer of chaos. Ooh. In fact, I might still have it here. I can throw, but yeah, I do. Dude. Be a producer card. of positive. Quote card, man. I love that, Chaz. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So we posted that again on Twitter and it kind of took off. I said it the other day, I think two nights ago, just came out and I was like, apparently it's been shared a ton. So it's it's the truth. Right now, be a producer of positive. And that's why I'm doing these podcasts or these lives every twice a day. And, and as much as my schedule can, I'm going to do them twice a day. Um, so listen, I appreciate it. We got people on the East coast. It's it, 10 to 11 on the East coast and we got people on the West coast and, and in between. So I am so, by the way, I just have to say this while my internet's still up. I'm so proud of our tribe. I'm hearing stories left and right all day about our network stepping in and supporting each other. I have heard some of the most amazing stories it literally brought me to tears today. Some of the things I'm hearing about our people. Um, <laughs> I keep and dude, everyone's like, you need to be at connect. He needs to be at connect. He needs to be at connect. Yeah. Uh, we'll I'll work on that. We'll I'll work on that. The other. I'm going to be there one way or the other. I, I, yeah, we'll, we'll figure it out. I love, 
I love, I love, I love what you guys are doing. Um, I, I'm, I'm trying to gain enough capacity to help build the, the chapter here in Utah. I, yeah. I believe so strongly in these networks because over the last 10 years, I mean, not well, really seven years for me, over the last seven years, I'm an introvert. And it's kind of funny. I, I used to just embrace this, that I can do it on my own. And mm-hmm. that's the definition of poverty. If I try to do everything on my own, by default, I do nothing, right? I can't do everything on my own. So as I adopt what my unique abilities are and I focus on that, the more I connect with other like-minded individuals, the better my life is. And everything launched for me, everything changed for me once I got out of my own insecurity and stepped into a group of like-minded, you know, purpose-driven individuals, everything changed for me. And I'll never forget the first check I wrote to go to a mastermind. I've been doing it ever since. I've invested over and over and over again. I've doubled down on my networks and being around people like you, Chaz, being around your community at that cash flow event that we did out in Texas, man, I came away from that so fired up. I love what you're building. Cash flow mastery. Uh, Nikki says, I shared your podcast with multiple people already. So thank you, thank you so much. Uh, and then Gary LaRue, our regional partner, almost has a thousand people. He said, I'll go up and help him, but it has to be in the summer. <laughs> <laughs> Gary, come on, man. Gary was at cash flow mastery as well as well. Awesome. So listen, man, appreciate you guys. Remember twice a day as much as I can. Uh, I know I've got a couple days where it's going to be tight to do it twice a day, but I'm doing everything I can. I'm working as hard as I can to bring you positive messages every day. Uh, you know, plug in. I've got some other guests that I've reached out to that I've asked that I've never talked to before in my life. I just reached out to them and said, look, I got a tribe that needs to hear what you talk about. And you know what? I'm being blown away by the number of people who said, yeah, I'm in. I'm in. Dude, I got a billionaire next week on my podcast. Awesome. So, listen, man, however I can help you, uh, I'm so I'm just I'm honored to call you a friend. So thanks for, um, you know, doing doing what you do for the same chess. All right, guys, have a good night. I will see you tomorrow. Take this message. Hear what Ryan said and implement what he talked about. You guys are the best. We love you. We'll talk to you soon. Be well.